Hey friends, this is Ellie Holcomb, and I'm so excited to invite you to join me and the Lifeway Women for an Advent Bible study, Joy to the World. I'll be leading you in song each week, and my friends at Lifeway Women have created video devotional content, personal study in the Bible study book, family devotions, Advent activities, and more. We can't wait to celebrate the good news of great joy found in the Christmas story with you this Advent season through this new study. Learn more at lifeway.com slash joy to the world. This is the Marked Podcast from Lifeway Women. Each episode, we'll talk about what God is doing, how He has and is marking each of us. We're so glad you've joined us today. Hello and welcome to the Mark Podcast. I am Elizabeth Heinemann and I am so excited because today we have a couple on who have been on our list for a while to have on the podcast. Every time we ask for ideas, people say, you need to have the Ortlands on. So I'm so excited to welcome Ray and Janie Ortland. Welcome to the Mark Podcast. Thank you, Elizabeth. We're so glad to be here, aren't we? Yeah, it's a privilege. Thank you. Yes, we're so excited. So tell us about your family and your ministry for people who may not know you. Well, we have been married almost 53 years. Wow, congratulations. Thank you. Uh Oh. And we still like each other. (laughs) That is a big accomplishment right there. (laughs) And we have four children, Mm -hmm. all grown and gone. And married. Yeah. And 15 grandchildren. Wow. Yeah. Elizabeth, we feel very, very blessed. Yes. That is some fun. The 16th holiday. with the Lord in heaven, and we look oh. forward to meeting her someday. Yeah. Yes. Those are some fun holiday gatherings, I'm sure, <laughs> yes. with all those, fam- all those grandkids. <laughs> they would be, but our children have lived very far away from okay. us up until six months ago. Okay. So London... Chicago, California. Well, those are all good places to visit, though. Uh, well, <laughs> you know, you raise your kids to think for themselves, right? Yes. And then they do. And they have this crazy idea, like <laughs> they have their own lives to live. So, I know. It's I mean, crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Why would they think that you want them to like, go and thrive and do as the Lord has called them to do? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, tell us about your ministry. I know, Ray, you were a pastor for a long time. Yes, and then five years ago, handed that ministry off mm-hmm. to a younger man, Dr. T.J. Timms. The church is doing really well. We're so thankful. And now, Janie and I are are freelancing for Jesus. I love that. (laughs) Freelancing for Jesus. That's a good term. Yeah. Well, you've written a, you've co-written a couple of books with B&H. One's called To the Tenth Generation, and the other one is Your Family is God's Plan. So tell us about the message of each of these books. Mm. Well, the message of each of them intertwines. Right. Yes. They play off of each other. Yeah. So we have the children's book to implant into young hearts and minds these this wonderful vision of what it really means to be a Christian family. Mm-hmm. And the adult book, every day this world beats us up and tells us, in effect, you're nothing more than a unit in a market niche. Yeah. You're nothing more than uh, part of a voting block. You're just here for somebody else's grandiose agenda. But then we open up the Bible, and we find out how much we really matter and how much our families really matter. Yeah. In Acts chapter 2, for example, uh, the Apostle Peter says, the promise of the gospel, the promise is for you, and for your children, mm. and for all those who are far off. So God is thinking in big categories, far into the future. Yeah. And for so many years, Jenny and I, you know, we, we loved our family with all our heart, but we weren't thinking far into the future. And what we've come to realize, <laughs> and it was the Lord who gave this to Jenny, <clears throat> what we've come to realize is, is that we can be, Jenny and I, parents and grandparents now, 
we can be an inspiring presence in our future family Mm. long after our journey through this world is over. And there's a way to do family now and invest in family now such that future generations will will benefit long term Mm -hmm. from our commitment right now. There's a way to do family that will matter far into the future. And that's what the book is about. And as Ray said, that didn't come to us easily. I imagine many of our listeners are mm-hmm. young mothers mm-hmm. who are just trying to figure out, mm, yeah. how do I live through another day? How do I make it till dinner time? <laughs> right, yeah. until yeah. daddy gets home right. or mom comes over to help me. <laughs> yes. uh, because it can seem very monotonous. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, food needs educational needs, health needs, over and over and over again every day. Mm -hmm. And it's hard for a mother, a young mother in particular, to think along the terms of Acts 2. These blessings are for you and your children and for those who are far off. That's what we want to help moms and dads and grandparents and aunts and uncles. Mm -hmm. and We want to help them see yeah. That God has a plan for your family way into the future, and he's using you today, right yeah. now. Yeah. So we're not here to lay heavier burdens on anybody, mm-hmm. but, but instead to, to, you know, we wish we could just look in their eyes and say, <laughs> you matter so much. Right. And the commitments you're making in the ordinary every day mm-hmm. matter so much, and they are going to resonate. You do this for Christ, through Christ, your ordinary every day, it is going to be pushing dominoes over far into the future. You can give yourself permission to dare to believe it. I love that phrase, give yourself permission to dare to believe it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that can apply to many different things too. Yes. Um, And I like what you said about not we're not putting pressure on people. In some ways, it almost relieves some pressure to oh, yeah. know that it's it's an everyday faithfulness. Yeah. It's not necessarily this big, huge thing that you have to do with your kids every day to try to figure out how to leave that legacy of faith. And I know a lot of people my age and older are looking to that next step of the how do I leave a, leave a legacy behind? How do I do that thing? And so I love that this plan or this these two books have that kind of plan in them, and for the kids too. I think that's so fun that you have a kids book, um, and we know that moms of children of all ages listen to this podcast. So I would love for you to Janie to keep speaking those words of encouragement to moms of young children as well as the moms of grown up children. Um, what advice or encouragement would you have for them? As they try to create this culture of faith in their homes every day, what does that look like? How do you do that when you're just mm. trying to wait till dad gets home to help yeah. you with the chicken nuggets? Yes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I wish I had done it better. But what but I would like... Jenny, you were magnificent. It was <laughs> Ray. The ordinary every day you were... Let me interrupt you. Sorry. We're getting on this way. <laughs> <laughs> you were so kind. But... What I would like to say to the moms listening is, it's not up to you. Mm -hmm. If it were up to you, we would all be bent over in exhaustion and defeat. Mm -hmm. This, what we want moms and dads and grandparents, other people to see through these two books, is that this is God's idea. Right. He is the one that wants to so fill you and use you before you were ever even born. He planned out your future generations. Mm -hmm. And today, he has planned, it's already written in his book about you, he has planned it, and he's going to use today. So look to him. Mm -hmm. He is the one who's calling you to the 10th generation. I might, I wonder if we should share how we came up with that idea to oh, the 10th generation. that would be awesome, yeah. yeah. You, you were reading, was it Deuteronomy 23? 
Yes. Okay, you're minding your own business reading the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> when bang, you know, Deuteronomy. <laughs> yeah, I know, books. as we all do. <laughs> I know. It was in Deuteronomy 23, and I remember um, reading in the early parts of the chapter mm-hmm. how God said the Ammonites and the Moabites are excluded from worshiping with the Israelites because they weren't kind yeah. to you when you came out of the... To the 10th generation. Yes, and it says, not just you can't worship, but to the 10th generation you're excluded. Well, that was really hard for me to read, Mm -hmm. Elizabeth. I'm married to an Old Testament scholar, so I knew I could ask him, but I thought it would be better for me to just let it sit on me first. Mm -hmm. And I thought, this just doesn't sound like the the God I love and right. honor and want to serve with my whole right. life and I want to teach my children and grandchildren about, it was very confusing to me. Mm-hmm. And it took me a while. Eventually I did ask Gray, and we talked about it together. And what I decided to do, um, because I oftentimes will do a read through the Bible each year, mm-hmm. is as I read from then on, Deuteronomy 24 on, to look for every time when God speaks about blessing your children and family and coming generations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I couldn't believe it on nearly every page. I mean, there were a few pages, but every time I saw it, I marked a little tenth Mm -hmm. to remind me of the tenth generation all Mm -hmm. the way out. And... I made a list, and Ray and I looked at it, and we thought, this is such an encouragement to us. Yes. It, how did you put it, darling? Well, if God would discipline those people groups back then to the 10th generation, how much more would his heart long to bless Mm. a family to the 10th generation? So there are parts of the Old Testament that are meant to be a contrast right. with the ultimate grace of God in Christ mm-hmm. yet to come. Mm-hmm. So uh, Janie and I began, this sort of blew up our categories. Instead of thinking two weeks out or even two years out, we began to think in terms of 10 generations out. And if, conservative estimate, if a generation takes about 20 years to turn around, then we can we can look out 200 years wow. of our family's future. Mm-hmm. And, and we, we have to face the fact that we bear some responsibility for th- those human beings that are on their way into history. Right. Uh, I mean, it's all our fault. We, <laughs> <laughs> and, and so we, we're not going to say, well, you know, we're doing fine. We don't care about them. Mm. We, we care deeply. So God expanded our categories and expanded our hearts and expanded our prayers. And now we have a sense of connection with, responsibility for, and love for our future family. Mm. And we want to steward the present moment, which is so often disguised as ordinary, mm-hmm. but in fact is glorious. Mm-hmm. Right. God conceals the glorious in the ordinary. Mm. And, and he gave us the Bible to see what's really going on. So Jenny and I, uh, we're just learning now to, to think out beyond the immediate and realize God is giving us the privilege of being, as a family, historically significant. Yeah. I mean, there are, if we've done the math correctly, about 55,000 people on their way into history because we wow. got married 53 yeah. years ago. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's incredible to think about. Yes. Yeah. I, I would just like to come back to that wonderful phrase that uh, Ray has of the how much moreness mm-hmm. mm. of God. Yeah. Yes. I think uh, particularly young moms need to embrace that. Yes. That... <laughs> Um, that is our Heavenly Father's way. There's mm-hmm. so much more that I have for you, yes. not negative scrutiny and shaking his finger at us, but right. he delights in us. He delights in 
us as his children and the children he's giving us. Yes, we have a Bible study with that title, How Much More, by really? Lisa Harper. Oh. And she talks about that, like how much more. And I think she takes it, I could be wrong about this, but I'm pretty sure she takes it from that verse of how much more, if you do this for your son, then how much more does the heavenly, exactly. would the heavenly yes. father do this for you? And so um, she talks a lot about that. But I, lo- I love that phrase as well. Just mm-hmm. how much more does he love you than you love those around you yes. and just thinking about that. Yeah. And I was just thinking as you were talking about the 10th generation and you're thinking towards the future, but also to think towards the past of like who was in those generations leading mm. up to us. Um, I've recently, so part of my job here at Lifeway is doing um, leading Lifeway Women Academy, which is courses for women. And we've recently done a couple of different courses that have gone through like the history of Christianity and just thinking about these people that came before us and what they, um, the precedent that they set and the legacy that we're still living out because we're still in the 10th generation probably. I would have to do the math to make sure, but I would imagine of like Lottie Moon and yes. um, the Charles Spurgeon and all of these people that came before us in the family of God, mm-hmm. we're still that 10th, we're in those 10 generations and what their legacy has meant for us mm-hmm. and for our faith today. And even the Reformation, I mean, that's a yes. little more than 10 generations, but yeah. still we're reaping the benefits of that. We're, we're uh, celebrating the blessings that they had, like yes. you were saying, Janie, of, in the Bible. And so I'm thankful for those who went before us and for their yeah. example yes. in that. We're somebody's 10th generation. Right. We're somebody's 10th generation. And what if Lottie Moon and Charles Haddon Spurgeon had caved right. and given up on Christ mm-hmm. and walked away in disgust? Mm-hmm. Would we be here right. serving Christ in our generation? I mean, they are, we are just as consequential as they were mm-hmm. for the future. Oh, that's hard to believe. Say it again, <laughs> honey. That's, you well, know, that's hard to believe. It's easy to believe that we don't matter mm. because that's the message coming at us every day. Mm-hmm. And it kind of feels real. Yeah, it does. You know, going to the grocery store and and uh, um, and and writing out the bills and taking out the recycle and so that doesn't feel like consequential. It doesn't feel like something that you're like, yeah, this is my legacy. Yeah, yes. this is this exactly. is going to matter long term. Right. Yes, but it's that's the very context in which dads and moms, mm-hmm. grandparents, aunts and uncles do and say things. They just, without even realizing it, we don't have to orchestrate this. God does. They, we just drop pebbles into the m- mental pools of our children and the ripples go out mm-hmm. in every direction. Mm-hmm. I remember, for example, I was a senior in high school, 1966, and my dad and mom gave me a Bible for my birthday. And, uh, and I'll never forget what dad wrote in the front of the Bible, the personal inscription. He said, Dear Bud, In giving you this Bible, your mother and I can give you nothing greater. Mm. This book has been our dearest treasure. Be a student of the Bible, and your life will be full of blessing. Love, Dad. Philippians 1.6. I love it. So I look up Philippians 1.6, right? Paul says, I'm sure of this, that he he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion Mm -hmm. at the day of Jesus Christ. Well, I needed that encouragement because I was 17, I loved the Lord, but I was a total knucklehead. I was... (laughs) (laughs) Aren't we all at 17? (laughs) (laughs) And yet, here I... That was um, 50... That was 57 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I remember the very words my dad wrote. Yeah. And I can't think about them without emotion. Mm-hmm. Now, Dad wasn't writing that back in 1966, thinking, well, they're going to have this new thing called a podcast. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and yet, here we are in, yeah. in, in Nashville, Tennessee, in the year of grace, 2024. I'm quoting my dad mm-hmm. with deeply felt um, emotion. Mm-hmm. And, and my dad and my mom, every dad, Christian dad and mom, consecrated to Christ— we're this we're doing God is using us in this in this deep way all the time. We don't need to see how it's going. Yeah. God is attending to that. Mm-hmm. I love it. 
That's one of the things that we talk about often on the podcast, and we'll get to this question later on, but we talk about what has marked you in your walk with Christ. And it is has impressed upon me that so many people answer that question with someone's name, mm. and it's sometimes their parents, a lot of times their parents, their moms, but a lot of times it's just this person who was at my church, and I saw them, or they spoke this word to me, or they said this, or this woman who took me out to eat, and she invested in my life. And she was not my mom. She was not my sister. She was not my aunt, but she was like another member of the congregation. And she saw me and wanted to invest in me. So I think about that when you're talking about these little ordinary things. And it may not be a big thing to you as the person giving those words of encouragement, but it can be something that plays. um, I heard a speaker once say, what plays on the tape recorder of your mind? Mm -hmm. And is it good and make sure that whatever you're saying to people, if they're playing, if it's replaying on the Mm, tape recorder in their mind, that it is an encouragement. And so I think about that a lot too. Mm. Okay. So I'm going to shift the conversation just a little bit. Um, You have a reputation, both of you do, for discipling and mentoring individuals and couples who are younger than you. I've known so many people who have said, they're such an inspiration to us. They mentor us. Um, what encouragement or challenge do you have for those listeners who are further along in their marriage or in their faith to walk aside, alongside those younger than them? Because there are lots of young people who want to mentor, mm-hmm. but what would you say to the people who are a little bit further along? How would you encourage them? Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing sweeter than building a friendship with a person or a couple from a younger generation, Mm -hmm. you gain way much more than you ever give. Yes. Mm. I would say whether you're doing it as a couple or maybe a a man to a man or a woman to a woman, Mm -hmm. uh, do it for two reasons. First of all, because you will benefit but most of all, because the Lord has told us to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's told us there's great blessing in this. You are to make disciples. Right. And that's what a disciple is. It's someone who spends time together and you learn things together. Mm-hmm. So many women in particular, I, I can speak to the women, feel inadequate. What do I have to right. offer? What, you know, I would never disciple anybody. That's for you know, Lisa Harper. Right. <laughs> other people, other women. Jannie Orland. Well, <laughs> um, I would say no. It's for anyone yes. who knows Jesus. If you know Jesus, you can surely find someone who's known him a week less than you <laughs> or a month less than yes. you or a year less. And See if they might not walk with you through life Mm -hmm. for the next 6 to 12 months. It doesn't have to be for 35 years. Right. (laughs) You could put a time frame around it. Yes. But it would be wonderful for you to find someone in your church or your neighborhood Mm -hmm. and say, would you be willing to meet with me for the next six months? We could have a cup of tea or coffee together and mm-hmm. talk about things that are important to us. Right. We could pray for each other. Mm-hmm. Honey, what's that great verse in Second Corinthians? Uh, I think in chapter twelve or thirteen. It's Second Corinthians twelve fifteen, the second part. I where Paul says, "I will most gladly spend and be spent for your souls." Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Is that the verse yeah, you're thinking that, of? You embody that, sweetheart. Well, you, thank you. You just Ray. pour yourself out for others. The the adverb in that sentence is gladly. Yes. Mm. <laughs> um, and I think people can tell that. Mm. If this is a duty. Yeah. Or if this is a gladsome offering, I, I'd really like to get to know you. Yeah. And I can learn from you, and maybe the Lord will give me something to offer to you. Mm-hmm. And I, I love that too, especially as we talk about the everydayness of our faith and living that out and how that is our legacy as the everyday faith. Um, I think that it's important to not put a lot of pressure on ourselves to be, you know, like you were saying, oh, I can't disciple somebody, but it's just, hey, come alongside me as I live out this ordinary, extraordinary, supernatural yeah. life that I live as a Christian and see how I... Um, 
parent and see how I do my laundry or see how um, I know for me as a single woman, it's a lot of times that is perhaps the first single woman they've encountered that is living a life in the church because they're just, there haven't been a lot in generations before me. And so um, I work with our mentoring program at my church. And I remember specifically one mentee, um, she needed a place to stay for a couple of nights and she came and stayed at my house and she was just like, oh, wow, you live here. And it was just like, (laughs) I was like, oh yeah, she probably hasn't seen a house that a single woman lives in. And so Mm -hmm. it was just interesting to see like, oh, this is okay. So this is something that I can offer to her is that it's it's going to be okay <laughs> if you don't find your spouse in college. Life will still go on. Um, and kind of leaving that um, or helping her to see that there's still a way to walk with God even without getting yes. married, which I think is a message that is still um, said in our churches <laughs> in some ways, yes. um, maybe not overtly. But um, along with that, what advice do you have for um, young couples? So you had talked about the the older couples or the more mature Christians, what advice do you have for young couples or new believers to help them find a mentor? Join us live in 2025. Lifeway Women announced our live event lineup for next year, and we may be in a city near you. Featuring Going Beyond Live with Priscilla Shire, Feast with Christy McClellan, and introducing In the Word with Jen Wilkin. Plus, when you use code LIVEIN25, you'll save $10 on individual registration through September 30th. Learn more at lifeway.com slash women's events and join us live in 2025. Well, I would say look around and ask, who, who do I see here that, that I respect, that I trust, that if I could become more like that person, <laughs> wow, that would mean a lot to me. Mm. I, I, want, I want my life to matter. Yeah. And who could help me move from where I am to, to closer to that, that kind of person, I, that kind of, in my case, that kind of man I really, I really want to become? Mm. And go find that guy, ask him out for coffee. And open your heart. Dare to open your heart. And say to him, I respect you. I trust you. Could we have coffee together once a month for three months? Mm-hmm. I'm buying. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and we can, and I want to ask you a bunch of questions. And we can reevaluate after three months. Maybe another three months after that would work. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to be a bother to you. I promise not to be a hassle. But I want to, I want to find out how you walked with Christ mm. and how he got you where you are now. I yeah. would love to hear that story and follow you as you follow Christ, the way the Apostle Paul spoke of it. So mm-hmm. go ahead and stick your neck out. Yeah. We often tell people who ask us, because we have people ask all the time, how do I get a mentor? How do I get... And we say that, so start small. Don't don't ask them to, let's do life together for the next 35 years. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It's a big ask. Um, but say, hey, let's go get coffee. Let's do this Bible study together. Let's read this book together and talk through it. Um, and I think y'all's book to the 10th generation would be a perfect one to do mm. as couples or as... Um, you know, a man to man, woman to woman, to kind of walk through that together and say, hey, what do you think about this chapter? What stood out to you? Mm-hmm. And that would be a pretty low stakes way to offer, to mentor or to be mentored by somebody, mm-hmm. I feel like. Okay, so let's talk about Your Family, God's Plan, which is a children's book. What inspired you to write for that demographic? And how is it different from writing to an adult audience? Well, I'm trained in elementary education and taught second grade for 13 years in (laughs) different places we've lived. My heart is in uh, with that age group. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to give our, uh, the adults who are reading the book, a tool to use with the children in their life Mm -hmm. to help them see how God looks 
at families, at mm-hmm. their specific family. Mm-hmm. Each family is so different. Right. And sometimes it's hard uh, for a family who, who might be single-parented. Mm-hmm. Uh, perhaps adoption has entered in, mm-hmm. or any number of ways a family can differ right. from the one next door. Right. We wanted to give adults a way to talk to the children in their life about family, about generation. Mm-hmm. It's based on the verse from Mary's Magnificat mm-hmm. in Luke chapter 1, verse 50. Um, his mercy is from generation to generation. Yes. And that's what we want children to see. Oh, you mean when Grandpa went to church when he was a little boy, and then you went to church when right. you were a little girl, and, mm-hmm. and they kind of get the picture. And when my, I have children, I want them to love Jesus too. Yes. So it will pass on until Jesus comes again. I love it. And I think that is such an important message for kids today because mm-hmm. they're hearing the all families are different, but not necessarily in a biblical way. Yes. Um, and to bring that back to where from generation to generation, loving God is what we're passing along. Yes. Um, and so I think that's really important. And our women will love that and getting to read that to their kids. And it's such a cute book. It's like it's mm-hmm. one that you would like to read, I feel like. Uh-huh. You know, there's some children's books that you're just like, please don't let this be a favorite because <laughs> 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 I don't want to read it 4,000 times. Uh-huh. But I feel like yours is so cute and the drawings are really pretty as well. And oh. so um, I'm excited to have that resource for, for women to well, get for their kids. Elizabeth, we also want to stress through that book that God is the main character. Right. We show some families that are not really good families. Mm -hmm. We talk about Joseph in the Old Testament being a tattletale. (laughs) And Solomon, King Solomon, from whom Jesus came, worshiping idols. Mm -hmm. But it, it was through Mary that we see those words, God is the one. It's his mercy And that can help a parent show a child that our family isn't perfect. We're going to do a lot of things wrong, but God's mercy will cover it. Mm. And we can keep looking to him no matter what. That's what we want. And that's really significant, that message. God's Mm -hmm. mercy is from generation to generation. In our days of of fear, Mm -hmm. we're living in a very fearful, apprehensive uh, there's a lot of anxiety in this right. generation. Yes. And and instead of sort of bracing ourselves against the next horrible thing that's going to happen, what if it's true that the real story is God's mercy, mm. that that's what we can look forward to? Yeah. That God has promised his mercy is going to move forward from generation to generation. Mm-hmm. Parents need that confidence. Yes. Yes. And, that and to impart that hope and that confidence to children mm-hmm. is very significant. I, that, honey, that was a perfect verse to choose as kind of the theme. Well, we can thank the Holy Spirit. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> thank well, we do. We hasten <laughs> well, to we thank him. Yes. His mercy was on us, wasn't yeah, it? That's, that's a great point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we thank him. One thing that that brought to mind, like the mercy of God and the a willingness to say, hey, we're all in this together, we're all making mistakes. We did a survey, our, or one of our teams here did a survey or looked at a survey, I'm not really sure, but they um, surveyed a lot of adults in America who were churchgoers or not churchgoers. And the number one thing they said kept them in church was that their parents apologized to them which I think is such an interesting thing that they saw their parents practice repentance and they would apologize when they did wrong. And that was like the number one thing that adult children who were in church said kept them in church, which I found so fascinating. But it goes along with what you're saying of the mercy is what is traveling. And so to see that modeled Mm. of like, I'm not, I'm not, not a sinner. Like I'm a sinner and I am going to do wrong, but I'm going to show you what it looks like to do wrong and then repent of that. And so that, um, I just love that. And I love that, that verse, the Holy Spirit showed you that verse for that, because that is what is really important Mm -hmm. to pass along. Okay. I, I'm going to ask you a question that I did not prep you for, but has been brought to mind as we've been talking about this. So we have a lot of our listeners are parents, but there are a lot of them that are not 
parents of children biologically. Um, what? How would you tell them about to this tenth generation? How do they contribute to that? What is their purpose in uh, giving a legacy to the next generation? How do they do that if they don't have their own kids? God is not surprised by where they are. Mm -hmm. In fact, he's delighted with where they are. This is, this is his good will for them for today. Right. And I would say, get to know some children, <laughs> yeah. whether in your church or your neighborhood. Mm. Single women are some of the most important factors in our Sunday school at Emmanuel. They love the children of Emmanuel, mm -hmm. and they care for them. Uh, well, it comes back to something that you mentioned a few minutes ago, Elizabeth, and that is it's in a church, a healthy gospel-centered church, we come together and we are a community. We're this big family in Christ, mm -hmm. and everybody matters Everyone. in that church. Mm -hmm. Everybody contributes. Nobody's a spectator. Right. And I can think of individuals at Lake Avenue Church in Pasadena when I was a kid who served, and n not only in the youth group, for example, but I just noticed them. I mm -hmm. saw them in church faithfully showing up, mm -hmm. loving the Lord, living for Him. They didn't even know that they were making an impression. They were... I have mental images. My God Himself was stocking my memory bank with people and impressions of them that have inspired me to this day. Mm -hmm. So again, we don't have to mastermind uh, how God is going to use us for the future. Right. We just show up. We're all in, <laughs> and God is going to make this happen. Yes, mm -hmm. And we can be a presence in our future family and in future generations of God's family by being faithful to him today. Mm. No matter whether there are biological right. children yes. or not, along with Ray... I, I grew up in an unbelieving family, mm -hmm. but my mom took us to the local church because they would have child care right. on Sunday mornings. <laughs> child care is important. <laughs> that's right. And it was through Miss Brown, mm -hmm. never married, I came to faith in Jesus Christ wow. at age nine. And I, I praise God for Miss Brown. She has been passed down into my generations mm -hmm. through what she has taught me oh in the goodness. past. So, oh, whoever you are, God can use you. He yeah. will use you in the coming generations. Honey, I didn't know that. Miss Brown, thank God for her. There is something of Miss Brown in these books mm -hmm. that we've written. There is Miss Ada Brown, yeah. Lake Harry Baptist in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I love it. She's part of your 10th generation. She yes. is, yeah. Elizabeth. It's wow. so true. Mm -hmm. Please, dear women who might not have children or your children might be gone, don't think this is only for those who have children right there on their laps yeah, right now. That's right. good. That's a good word. Okay, what was it like to work on writing a project together? <laughs> Do you offer marriage counseling here? <laughs> Actually, you know, yeah, it, I mean... It was fun. It was fun, but we did have to work through some stuff. Yeah. Um, he, he is a wordsmith. He has his doctorate in languages. Uh -huh. it, you know, I mean, he, he right. just n understands words. He understands how you can tell even by the different ways But you're speak. a nice person. <laughs> you, people like you. But they I'm don't get tedious. that in a book. A book is words, you know, so... <laughs> And you can see how the book I feel like you are <laughs> making a great partnership. Here. Yeah, I, I think we did. Yes. It, it was fun, Elizabeth, yeah. ultimately. <laughs> we, we started off where I was going to write it alone, then he was going to write it alone. We let it go for a while, and then we decided to try together. We've never written together. Mm -hmm. and We divided up the chapters, and yeah. each of us would write a rough draft, then the other would speak yeah. into it, and we'd cobble together something that was apparently presentable. 
So <laughs> <laughs> yes, very much so. I think that's great. I I we do a few different things here at Lifeway where we'll um, at Lifeway Women where we will have co-authors or people come together to do a Bible study together, and I always think it's so much richer because you mm, get these different that's good. not rich maybe not much richer, but I do think it's it's a different kind of discipleship because you get these different perspectives, wow. and there are certain <laughs> subjects or certain um, books of the Bible even that benefit greatly from having different perspectives speak into them. And so I love getting to read something that is co-written by people, especially by two people who have spent 53 years together. I mean, that is um, such a legacy in and of itself. And so... And it was this insight that Jenny, that God gave Jenny uh, reading Deuteronomy, Mm -hmm. what, 10 or 12 years ago, that eventuated in the book. And the the best parts of the book she came up with. Oh. <laughs> I'm serious. The, the most real and helpful, actionable, practical, that was Jenny. <laughs> Could it. we cut this from the <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Please don't edit that it. out. <laughs> okay, I'm going to shift us to the final question, and I hinted at it earlier, but we ask all of our guests, what is one thing that has marked you in your walk with Christ? Hmm. I would say... A person. Her name is Anne Ortland. She's mm-hmm. my mother in law who's with Jesus now. Um, we never were able to live in the same city, but she loved me in very real ways that I could feel. She discipled me without mm-hmm. my even knowing it mm-hmm. in ways that were delicious to me. <laughs> you know, she would say, oh, Janie, could I show you something that the Lord showed me this past year when we'd be at their house for Christmas? Mm -hmm. And she would open up a notebook and show me how he helped her, you know, figure this out or that out. She has influenced how I see the Lord, Mm -hmm. how I worship him, how I give him to others, and how I love my husband more than anyone else. Mm. I'm mm-hmm. very grateful for your yeah. mama. Yeah. Okay, sweetheart, I apologize, but my wife has marked me more profoundly mm. than yes. anyone else. Nathan, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm you totally... I would say that? Yeah, I would be wrong not to say it. Here's, let me tell you about Janie. Janie is the most wholehearted, loving, all-in person I've ever known. Mm-hmm. No agenda. She's not, there's no cost benefit calculation in the way she perceives anybody. I've had the privilege of being married to her and living with her for 53 years. And it's really true, sweetheart. I just, you are a continual inspiration to me. And uh, you've marked me. I love hearing both of those answers. And even if it made you a little uncomfortable, Jamie, <laughs> just a little. I, I changed my answer. Ray is the one who is. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't do that. <laughs> I think the way that you are, arti- you both articulated it with um, Anne saying that she, you, she showed you, or the way that she saw Jesus is the way she influenced the way you see Jesus, I think is what you said. And that is such a beautiful thing and what we all would love to like pass along. I think that's a beautiful thing to end on as we talk, as we have been talking about passing along a legacy of faith. And that's what we all desire to do. And we desire to do it with our biological children, with those in the family of God that are not biological children, um, that we can pass along to the 10th generation, to those in the future, just like those in the past have done for us. And so I have been so encouraged by having you both on. And I'm so thankful that you, you, um, that we are part of the same like generation on earth together Mm -hmm. at the same time that we get to learn from you and um, hear part of your legacy and how you've lived out your faith in your everyday lives. And so thank you for being on the podcast today. Thank Thank you, Elizabeth. And listeners, we will be back next week with a new episode. Marked is a production of Lifeway Podcast, produced by Aaron Franklin. It's recorded at the Lifeway Podcast Studio in Brentwood, Tennessee, and engineered by Donnie Gordon with help from Nathan Howard. 
edited by William Hall with art by Leanne Dance. And I'm your host, Elizabeth Heinemann. Meet me back here next week. If you want to join in on the conversation, you can find us on social media at Lifeway Women. Today's show notes will be posted at lifewaywomen.com slash marked. If you enjoy the show, leave us a review. Hi, friends. I'm Jennifer Rothschild, and I want to invite you to join me for the Prepare Him Room virtual event this Christmas season. This time is going to be filled with worship led by Michael O'Brien, plus encouragement and teaching that is going to draw your heart to Jesus. So whether you're watching on your own or with a small group or hosting the event at your church, I know that you will discover the joy of Jesus's birth all over again. Register today at lifeway.com slash prepare him room. That's lifeway.com slash prepare him room.